So this question says, in the xy plane, the graph of the polynomial function f crosses the x-axis at exactly two points, a0 and b0, where a and b are both positive. So I'm just going to get a visual on this. So we have a y-axis, we have an x-axis, and um, I don't know, let's just say it's a parabola. Let's say it's an upward-facing parabola. If I'm wrong about that, I can always adjust this later on. But let's say my parabola looks like that, and here are my two positive x-intercepts. And let's just call this one point A, right? So that would be A comma zero. And this is going to be point B, so that would be B comma zero. So the question says, which of the following could define F? All right, so... Okay, now I understand what the question is asking. So uh, first of all, if there's only two x-intercepts, we should only have, it should be a quadratic, meaning it should have an x squared, which means I should have a parabola here, which also tells me that choice D is gone because we have three x's, which means if I were to simplify all of this, I'd have an x to the third power. So D is gone for that reason. Second of all, because these are all factored into binomials or product of binomials, we can find the x-intercepts pretty easily for each one by setting f of x to zero. So for answer choice A, if I said zero equals x minus A times x minus B, I then set each of those binomials separately equal to zero. And in fact, I would get x equals A and x equals B. And it's the only answer choice that has a minus sign in front of both the A and the B, which is why it leads to having a positive A for X and a positive B for X as the two solutions. So A is definitely the correct answer here. If we did the work with all the other ones, we'd see this would lead us to having X-intercepts of negative A and negative B, which we don't want because the question tells us that A and B are both positive. For choice C, we'd end up with a positive A and a negative B. So again, that's also gone. And for choice D, while we do get positive A and positive B, we also get a zero from this X here. So we'd have zero A and B. And that would give us, again, like I mentioned earlier, three x-intercepts, which we know we do not have. So that's that's the question, right? So what, what I, in essence, what I did was plug in picture here. I drew the graph based upon, to the best of my ability, based upon what I read in the question, and then use that as a visual.